Minecraft is a popular game. It's a flattish world that extends nearly forever. But what if Minecraft was a spherical planet? For those of you who don't know, Minecraft isn't infinite. People say it is, but it isn't. There are three dimensions to Minecraft. There's the overworld, which refers to the surface of the planet, the nether, which is eight times smaller than the overworld and nests inside the planet, and the end, which lies in the outer atmosphere of the planet, which kind of acts as the rings or the asteroid belt around it. But for now, we will only focus on the nether and the overworld because they are the only things that matter in these calculations. The overworld ends at 30 million meters from the center of the world, making Minecraft world 60 million meters in length. Because this goes on in all four horizontal directions, the surface area of Minecraft is 60 million meters by 60 million meters, giving us a surface area of 3 quadrillion 600 trillion square meters. The nether, on the other hand, is 8 times smaller than the overworld because one meter in the nether is equal to eight meters in the overworld. So we simply divide the length by eight, and we get a length of 7.5 million meters, and a surface area of 56 trillion 250 billion square meters. In order to determine how large Minecraft is as a spherical planet, we use the equation radius equals the square root of the surface area divided by four pi. This gives us the radius to the center of the sphere, or in this case, the planet, which is equal to 212,694,462.1 meters. We can calculate the radius of the nether by simply dividing the radius of the overworld by 8, or using the previous equation. But to take a different approach, we'll factor in 1 meter in the nether is equal to 8 meters on the surface using this equation. The central angle equals the arc length times 360 degrees divided by 2 pi r. If we plug in the data from the overworld, we get 2.1550454664 times 10 to the negative 6 degrees. We use a rewritten equation to get the radius, and now we plug in the data from the nether and get a radius of 26,586,807.76 meters. To solve the gravitational acceleration of Minecraft, I dropped a block of sand in-game and videotaped it at 60 frames per second. Then I edited the footage by adding a time overlay, both of which were slowed down to 5% speed. Using the equation d equals 1 half at squared, I was able to determine the gravitational acceleration, which is about 17.901 meters per second per second, or 18 meters per second squared. Even though objects are pulled to the surface at that acceleration, a day in Minecraft is 20 minutes, or 1200 seconds. There are no seasons in Minecraft, so the world is not tilted on its axis, and rotating along the equator means the sun will always be directly overhead, traveling on a path in the sky perpendicular to the horizon. For a planet this size with a day this short, we need to take the centrifugal force into account. Centrifugal force is the force outward from the center of rotation, opposite of centripetal. Finding the new gravitational acceleration is done by adding this force and the actual acceleration of gravity on the surface. With this equation, mass does not matter, it cancels out. Let's begin by solving for the centrifugal force, and to do so we need to solve for an object's velocity on its surface, which turns out to be 1,113,665 meters per second, or about 93% the speed of sound. Wow. With a centrifugal force this big, you should be flung off the planet and into space. To not let this happen, we add the acceleration at which objects are pulled to its surface, allowing an object to fall at 18 meters per second per second, which makes the new gravitational acceleration 5,849 meters per second per second. If we use this true gravity, we're able to solve for the planet's mass, which turns out to be 3 nonillion 967 octillion 54 septillion 366 sextillion kilograms, or 3.9670543663 times 10 to the 30th power kilograms. This means Minecraft has a mass of about two solar masses, which classifies it as a type A5 white dwarf star. If we want to find out how much of this mass is in each dimension, the overworld and the nether, we have to define something I'm calling the total mass average height. 
which corresponds to if we were to squish the world down, filling all the caves, then flattening the land, all the hills and valleys, at what height from the overworld bottom layer would the top of this volume exist? Even though every Minecraft world is random, there is a fairness among how the land is generated, meaning there will be plenty of flat terrain as well as mountains and caves, so my guesstimate is around 75 meters high for both dimensions. We multiply that by the surface area of each dimension to get the volume, add them both together and get their overall total volume. Then we divide the dimension total volume by the overall total volume to get the percent mass. Then multiply that percent by the total mass and we'll get how much mass is in each dimension. Now let's talk about the atmosphere. Minecraft is a model based off of Earth, so we can safely assume the average temperature is the same as Earth, around 288 Kelvin, or 14.85 degrees Celsius. Because it rains very often in Minecraft, and it rains a lot and can snow over the UK, I figured this would be a good place to model the atmosphere, around 50 degrees latitude. The height of Earth's troposphere, the breathable part of Earth's atmosphere, is around 9.8 kilometers high at 50 degrees latitude. The reason why I chose this area is because of the weather, average air temperature, and average ocean temperature, all of which corresponds to the data previously stated. With this known, we can calculate the thickness of the troposphere. Using our data and the model of Earth, we are able to conclude the height of the troposphere around the equator of Minecraft is 5.341 kilometers high, while at the poles where centrifugal force is inactive, the atmosphere is 0.01643665565 kilometers. But we're only worried about the equator because that's where gravity is 18 meters per second squared. Now let's talk about the nether. The nether is a hot place. So hot in fact, one cubic meter of water instantaneously evaporates. I'm curious to know how hot the air has to be to instantaneously evaporate one cubic meter of water. In order to do so, we will need to calculate how pressure on this planet increases with depth. We will need to solve for the scale height of the atmosphere. A scale height is the distance at which the density of an atmosphere decreases by a factor of E. Because we cannot evaluate the composition of Minecraft's atmosphere, it's once again safe to assume it has the same composition as Earth, about 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon. When we average that together, we get an atomic mass of 28.96. Plug it all in, and we get a scale height of about 4.5655 kilometers. Now we get the depth of the nether by subtracting the radius of the nether and the radius of the overworld to get a depth of negative 186,107.6543 kilometers. Using these two pieces of data, we can solve for the pressure at that depth. The pressure at sea level is 760 torr, same as Earth. This will be our initial pressure. With this, we find out the pressure in the nether is 3.9788136855 times 10 to the 17,706th power. That's a lot of zeros. To determine the boiling point of water at that pressure, we use the clausius clapeyron equation, but rewritten to give a temperature. Important things to note is the gas constant for dry air is about 8 joules per mole kelvin, and the molar heat of vaporization of water is 40.7 kilojoules per mole. We need to convert 100 degrees Celsius to the Kelvin scale, which is 373.15 Kelvin. Plug it all in and we get a negative Kelvin value. This is impossible. The Kelvin scale is a finite scale, so we can conclude that water cannot exist in vapor form at this pressure. We know water evaporates in the nether, so let's assume some things. The unbreakable layer of bedrock at the top and bottom of the nether keep the pressure inside at the same pressure as the surface. The layer works as a sort of arc structure holding up the weight of the rest of the planet. Water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius because the pressure is the same as sea level. Now let's backtrack a bit because we need to discuss a base temperature for water to be boiling from. Based on some weather research, we arrive at an average ocean temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. To determine the amount of energy required to heat one cubic meter of water, we multiply its specific heat with the weight in grams and the temperature change, and end up with an energy of 376,560,000 joules. 
Finally, to determine the air temperature at which the nether has to be in order for one cubic meter of water to evaporate instantaneously, we use a thermal exchange equation. First, let's define instantly as one thousandth of a second, or 0.001 second. We also need the thermal conductivity value of water, which changes with temperature. This makes things complicated to calculate because the value would be constantly changing with the temperature of itself. Since it changes less than 0.1 per degree Celsius, it can be overlooked because the value is so small. So we will be using the temperature 10 degrees Celsius to get a thermal conductivity value of 0.58 watts per meter per degree Celsius. To get the rate, we divide the amount of energy it takes to boil one cubic meter of water by the amount of seconds we want it to happen in. Now we rewrite the base equation to receive a temperature. Plug everything in and we get an air temperature of 649 billion. 241,379,320.3 degrees Celsius. As a bonus, here are some things I discovered summed up. The only way spiders could exist at this size would be if the atmosphere had a lot more oxygen. The flow of ocean currents carrying warmer or cooler waters regulate or disrupt the temperature of nearby areas, making some colder and others warmer. Minecraft is actually an elliptical planet. Gravity on the equator, where it spins, will be 18 meters per second squared because of the difference in centrifugal forces and the gravitational forces. While gravity at the poles is not affected by centrifugal forces, because you are not spinning around the planet, the force of gravity there is immense. It's the number that we calculated to solve for the mass. This will cause the planet, so to say, to compress at the poles. The moment the player would set foot in the nether, they would disintegrate. Since the gravity of Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared, but when taking into account the centrifugal force based off the radius of Earth in the seconds in a day, it's around 9.78 meters per second squared. So, does that mean the force of gravity should compensate and be a little more than 9.81 meters per second squared? Which means wouldn't the mass of Earth really be larger than originally calculated? Thank you.